Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You found this month's sales shot. I'm your host, LB, and we are joined by a very special guest with some really cool research and insight who I will have introduced himself in just one moment. But here's the important part. Open up your chat and tell us your number one go-to restaurant that you hope would be stranded on a desert island with you. Cool? Keep that chat window open because we're going to be using it. We're talking about how to engage on video. So Sylvain, we better not F this up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I, I mean, especially if we're going to give a class about it. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Not, not all right. All right. So let's keep the suspense. We'll end it. Please introduce yourselves for our fans here. So Sylvain so Trombley, I'm the newly appointed CRO at Unifor. And what do, does Unifor do? Uh, we were an AI company before AI was cool. So we've been in the AI business for the last 14 years. We take any forms of conversation, text, voice, email, and we use AI from speech recognition, computer vision, and all these technology. And the beauty of it is we're trying to humanize AI. So from we, we listen to conversation, we extract intelligence, we help people give a better experience, we guide sellers, we detect emotions, engagement, we take actions on behalf of call center agents, anything to improve the experience or either the user of our technology or the audience that is being analyzed via our technology. Oh, it's really cool. Now, I gotta be honest with you. I am a technology laggard. I have been resisting AI, but mostly because Alexa pisses me off and I yell at her every day and I think it, there's gotta be better. But I've been using Q for sales, which I love Q, right? Like James Bond, the extra, the tool maker um, for the last week or two. And I am loving it. I also read this research because Tim Harris, a good friend of mine, is your head of marketing. He sent me this research. I loved it so much. I asked you to come on and share some of the research with everybody because we're going to tell you very, very easy to fix tips. What the research from Q tells us about video engagement, and then we're going to pair it with the factor eight courses on how to fix it. This is the point where I tell you, by the way, folks, that... We do these sales shots every month. Most of you are regulars at my bar and I appreciate you. But if it's your first time, make sure you go to factorate.com forward slash shots and sign up for all the ones through the end of the year because we have a ton of fun doing this. Always tip rich, always free. But it's also the time in our show where I tell you that this is fun and this is great edutainment, but this is not training. If you want to really apply these skills, make sure you get the classes. Training is where you get to talk about it and experience it and then practice it and get feedback. And all of that is available in the sales bar. And of course, I have a special offer for you at the end. Are you ready to get started? Here we go. I'm ready. Boom. Let's all go. right. So why do we measure engagement? Why is this a big deal? Open up your chats. Pop quiz time. What percent higher or lower is closing if your prospects are engaged? during the meeting. Sliding scale, giving you some answers, chat it in, first one who gets it right wins nothing. 75% from Trey, 80%, 70%, hi Karen, 75%, 50%. Ooh, I'm loving this. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a trick question. Sylvain, do you wanna give them the drum roll answer from Q? An engaged customer has an 83% higher degree or propensity to buy than a non-engaged customer. So sorry, I tricked you on the scale. 83, that's almost double. Not bad, right? But wait, there's more. Q doesn't just measure engagement, which is attention. Q also measures sentiment. Help me define that, Sylvain. So sentiment, you know, it's, 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 a sentiment is a sentiment. You can be positive, you can be negative, you can be neutral, different degrees of, uh, like you've got engagement if you're present or not, and the sentiment is your attitude towards the, con the conversation or the, the message yes. being shared. I like that. So it's like engagement is presence and sentiment is emotion or attitude towards. Okay, yeah. I really, really like that. So are you ready for this? The answer this time is 89%. So if you can keep engagement high, and they like you, your chances of closing the deal are double. Thank you yeah. very much for coming to our sales shot. We'll see you next one. Now we're gonna tell you how to do that next. All right, 
This is how we roll. How do we engage immediately? Here we go. For each of these actions, I'm looking for a yes or no in the chat. Get your fingers ready. The first one is share my screen. Does engagement go up? Yes. Does it go down? No. Oh my goodness, somebody can't see my screen. Let's try this again, everybody. Um, dun, dun. Here we go. They're like, um, Lauren, can't see it. Glad you're, glad you're uh, doing all the work, but nobody can see what we're talking about. Are we good, everybody? All right, here we go. So when I share my screen, does engagement go up or does engagement go down? What do you say? Lots of answers, up, 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 up. Of course, for y'all here with this experience, because now you can finally see it, a few people saying down. Samantha, love the bravery. You are correct. Engagement actually goes down when we share a screen. Interesting, right? You know why? Because sellers ask fewer questions. When we share a screen, we tend to go into monologue motion. So it's not about the screen, it's about our behavior when the screen is up. All right, do I share my personal information? Do I talk about myself? Do I let you know me and that my favorite restaurants, Arby's or Wings or that sort of thing? Yes? No. Oh, I've got two no's. Don't tell me personal stuff. Trey's coming in with the yes. Taryn's coming in with the yes. What do you think, Sylvain? I'd say you want to share personal stuff. You want to create that bond. Yeah, 100%. And people are missing that one. So this one's a yes. Let people see your background. Let people know you. And we'll give you more tips on how to do that at the very end. Next one, do we review the goals and the agenda at the beginning? Yes for engagement goes up, no for it goes down. Everybody, oh, Wesley say a no on this one. It's a yes, it's a solid yes. And by the way, say here's what we're covering and then check in. Especially if you're presenting to mucky mucks like Sylvain, okay? If I have a C level on a call with me, I say, here's what we were thinking, but hey, here's your chance. Do you want to blow this up? Is there something that's more important? Do you like that, Sylvain, when you're given a chance to drive? Absolutely. Your uh, the priorities can change. Your goals can change. The, the audience might think you're here, but you're there. So absolutely review the goals of the agenda. Yep. And then ask for input. Okay. Do we ask questions? Does this yes for engagement goes up? No for engagement goes down. Oh, yeah. Liking that. Heather Fitzgerald, I'm taking that as a hell yes. And everybody nailed that. You bet. You've got to ask questions and engage. All right. So here's one. So then you added this one, right? When people come in and say, all right, here's your situation. And here's, here's, here's the problems that you're having. It's a trick question. It's not yes. It's no. Tell us why. So if you say recap their situation and problem is you're recapping it. So you're putting words in their mouth, which might not keep them engaged. Uh, I would twist that one around and say, ask them to recap their situation and validate after that. So you recap once they've shared with you, so you'll capture their engagement, and then you, you recap, did I understand this correctly? And then you jump into your presentation. Bingo. So folks, we think we're supposed to know where the buyers are, and we're supposed to be informed, and we're right. You're supposed to come in with, a proposal with an idea, right? If you're like a lot of my customers, you're probably facing yada, yada, yada. But don't stop there. It, are you facing yada, yada? Are you facing yada, right? So ask, get confirmation. You want to show you know what you're doing, but buyers hate it. Hate it when you come in and tell them their situation and their problems. All right. How about big energy? Now, see, I loved seeing this one on the list because no surprise, I tend to come in with big energy. Am I a yes or am I a no? Thanks, Chad. I'm going to take that one to heart because Sylvain's about to blow my uh, my my bubble here. What is it? So I would say show big energy. I would push back on that one. Uh, okay. What's important here is that you match your customer's energy. If I'll give you the perfect example. Monday morning, we show up. We're jacked on caffeine, jacked up. It's like, ah, but the customer is here. And if you're here, the customer is there, you'll never connect. You have to establish, like, connect, and this is what we call empathy. You've got to match your customer's emotion, and then you raise them up, or you basically keep them where they are. If they're here, you don't want to go any higher. But really, really important to match your customer's engagement 
to build that trust, build that rapport, which we're going to talk a bit more in this presentation. Exactly. Joe, you're right. you got to read the room. It's about mirroring, not about overwhelming. And I've absolutely had that go wrong for me. Smiling, yes or no? Sylvia, you leave with a smile when I say it. It's yes. a yes, right? Why is that? Why does why does Q measure a smile as positive? A smile is it, and it like whether you you realize it or not, it's got a, a positive impact on your customer's emotion, right there. That the smile, the energy, and you know it takes uh, I think eight or nine muscles to generate a smile, and it's like a frown is like something like seventy different muscles in your face. So uh, try to smile a bit more. It's always good. Um, it, it, listen, if you are a woman, you've heard of resting bitch face, right? R B F it's yes. real. So if, if you want to be easier to connect to just watch your facial expressions, I used to train trainers for a living and they hated having me in the room because I had RBF. And so they, like, I learned that I, to change my resting face to a small smile. So that's something we can all do. You'll also notice that I'm looking at the camera right now. That's tough. I can't see my chat, can't see Sylvain, I can't see the slides. Who knows if I'm screen sharing correctly? But what I'm doing is giving you eye contact and Q measures that as well, don't they? Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah, it is a big deal. People want to have the eye contact. So sometimes that means putting your notes right under your camera or moving screens around and it helps. All right, that's important folks. All right, let's talk about cameras because we can't measure any of this if we don't have cameras. I was surprised to learn this statistic. Everybody guess the number for me, please. What percentage of sellers aren't asking for cameras to be on? That's a good one. Love this one. Yeah, Chad's at 90, Wesley at high percent. That is a cop out, Wesley, check yourself. 80%, 50%, 90, 70, 75. 83% vast majority. So Wesley, you're correct. The vast majority aren't asking for cameras, but it's so much harder to connect with people. I've been an inside sales since way before we were doing cameras and you had to do it all over the phone and it was having both arms tied behind your back. Don't let and, those arms stay tied. Hey, Lauren, if you think about a message, like a conversation, only less than 10% of a, the message of a conversation is verbal. Between 30 and 35% is in the tone, the speed, the pitch, and more than 50% of our conversation is visual. So think about if you don't ask for the camera, you're missing north of 50% of the conversation. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, but listen, it's scary to do that, especially when you're a 27-year-old seller and you're selling to Sylvain's. So we've got three lines that you can use, okay? This first one is mine. Hey, if it's not too forward, are you okay sharing your camera so we can talk face-to-face? -face? Okay, I'm doing this very personal plea, okay? So Vane's got a, one that works with executives every time. Tell us about this. So I used to, I wouldn't say that, I used to shame, I wouldn't call it bully people, but say, why don't you take your camera on? You know, like, do you have like a face for radio today? But the reality of it, what I found that works really well is if you turn your camera on, Let's make a deal. I'll give you 10 minutes back at the end of the conversation. And what you'll notice is people, if you, if you make a deal, if, I, if you turn your camera on and I give you something back like time, people jump all over it and you see the cameras go on one after the other. And if your internet's not good enough, go get better internet because it makes a difference. And Nadine, check out her comment in chat, everybody. There is some real results for you. Um, I laugh about the fact that I do bully. So I will tell people, I straight up have slippers on under this desk and I will show them, right? And say, there is no judgment. Please, can I camera bully you so that we can have some eye contact? And people will do it. Or they'll tell you why they can't and you can, and you can connect over that, which is also good. So you got to ask for it. Just like shots. Here we go. Engaged buyers. So we're going to talk about what engaged buyers are doing. These are the things that Q is measuring and they do it in real time. Like I'm literally wa wa watching Sylvain disengage. Uh-huh, that's happening here, folks. Look at what he's doing. Engaged buyers do this, they smile. They lean forward. They're nodding along. This is all active listening, isn't it? They're looking at their screens, not at their phones. 
not at whatever else Sylvain is doing in the background. Here's an interesting one. They show their hands. I love this. They show their hands. And you'll see that they're chatting in or they're clapping or they're giving emojis. <laughs> I think we've made our point. Sylvain is showing us what's happening when they're disengaged. So look at, he was looking away, obviously. You got to zoom us back in. Or, zoom in. <laughs> zoom in. Leaning back, looking away, negative facial expressions. Um, you've got to demonstrate email eyes and phone praying for us, Sylvain. How can we notice when somebody, <laughs> besides literally turning off their camera and walking away like you just did, what yeah, are email eyes and phone praying? It's like, I call it the iPhone prayer or where people just look down or they, they go away, they disengage. And and the, the challenge a lot of time, you're kind of saying, but Sylvain, I don't always have the mosaic. Like on this screen here, everybody's looking at the camera. But like you said, Lauren, if you're presenting a slide, what's happening to the room in the background? So aids like Q allow you to read the room and read your, 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 your audience's like engagement and sentiment. And we look at the eye, the eye position because some people have become expert at uh, looking at the screen, but they're doing emails at the same time. And now what you see is eyes just going, scanning the screen, the head, the shoulders, but there's no... If the only thing you see is eyes moving from side to side and technologies like Q that read facial expression like 24 times by per second, quickly pick up on who's engaged and who's not. And this is where the technology really helps. I think this is where it's going to become table stakes, frankly, yes. right? Because we're all taking, we're all doing Zoom meetings. That's just where we live today. And which by the way, all my things are right here next to me. All my toys are in my face and my Slack and everything is going all the time. And it's even when I'm the seller, I'm doing email eyes. I know I am. All right. So if you want to engage people and you need to stop the disengagement, the number one thing you can do to engage somebody is ask a question. What is everybody's very favorite subject? Themselves. So here are some steps from our rapport building class. This is magic. You're having trouble connecting with somebody and you really want to build some good, authentic rapport at the beginning of a call. Here's how you do it. One, step one, you want to notice something or mention something that could be common ground, right? Hey, I noticed you've got a whiteboard wall to the side of you, Sylvain, okay? Or I noticed this great picture in your background, whatever it may be. Step two, you share. Don't put them on the spot first, right? I notice you've got a whiteboard wall. I do too. I can't think without a whiteboard marker. I travel with a whiteboard marker, right? Or here's an example on the screen about photography. Then you ask a question. Are you a are you a drawer too, Sylvain? Do you are you a whiteboarder? Addict I like, like I love to whiteboard, but whiteboard, you got to be careful. You need to wear pants when you whiteboard. Don't ever forget, because if you jump to, no, just kidding. Keep going, <laughs> Daddy. I can't, I can't even put that, I can't finish that joke. I, I know. It, it, once you have it in your head, you can't take it back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love that. Then you ask a follow-up question and end with an open question. Okay. The question closed and follow up gets them talking, shows that you care. Then you open them up with the open question. I'm going to follow up with another thing that's so important for sentiment, active listening. So much of what we listed on that screen, right? The nodding, the leaning forward, the looking, that's about being an active listener. So here are some steps that you can steal, okay? First thing, quit interrupting. Look at the camera, nod. Yes, mm-hmm. Oh, okay, got it. Little noises like that. Let people know that you're listening. Restating. I would say about one in every 50 reps does this consistently. Restate what you heard. God, I'll use this trick on my kids now and it works. Then you check in. Did I get that right? Did I miss something? That helps people feel heard, feel valued, and it pulls out all those hot buttons that you're looking for to sell them. All right, good. Oh, 
here we go. Let's talk about when it's not working. When it's there, you're recognizing the disengagement. The first thing you do is stop screen sharing, right? That way we can talk and then you pivot. And you know that as soon as I heard pivot, I'm thinking friends, right? Who knows this scene? Pivot, pivot. I've got three lines for you, two of mine and one in Sylvain's that you can use to pivot. Here's the first one. I feel like I've been talking for five straight minutes and I know that I lost y'all. It's my bad. Sylvain, what's the next most important thing we can cover for you? Okay. Absolutely. Go ahead. Call them out. Good. Perfect. All right. This is one you use. Talk to us. So if you see your audience at the middle of the call, that's usually, you know, you get the first five minute, the energy is high. Then sometimes we have a tendency to be really proud about what we do. We go into monologue and you see your engagement and sentiment dropping. You're spot on. Re-engage your audience and then validate, all right? Is what we're talking about going to meet what you wanted to accomplish during this call? So resituate the call and earn the right to advance the way your customer wants to advance. So you're asking them, this is what we covered. Oh my gosh, I saw time fly. All right. Is this on track with what you were expecting? Or are there things you absolutely want us to cover during the remainder of this conversation? So you really are forcing your audience to, to stop, pay attention, recap. What did they say again? All right. Did I get what I wanted out of this? And then you guarantee a, a value or an outcome to your meeting in the remainder of the meeting. Thank you for that. I did a poll while you guys read this last one on the slide. I did a poll this week on LinkedIn about how many people are loving demos today. And folks, 90% were negative. This is a skill we have got to start doing better. It's why I wrote the class, Demos That Don't Suck. Please go take that with you and your team. And by the way, the most common thing people were commenting about afterwards was exactly what you just said, Sylvain. Hello? Are, do I even have to be here for this? Could you? Yeah. Show me what I want to see. So if, if you notice you're losing them, if you're lucky enough to have Q and you see it going down, right, then stop and pivot. We and have, if you don't, stop the screen share and check it out. Yeah. So Lauren, we have customers that, you know, we had a CEO that did not trust his employee to deliver the right demo, right message. So he would forcing them to play videos and playing a of video. Him doing it. The engagement and sentiment when you play a can video during a presentation drops like it's a cliff dive. It is horrible. So just be very leery. Of, if you're going to show a video, uh, it needs to be short, sweet, to the point, and contextual. Okay, but the same research said that if you're going to show a system, show me the system, don't show me a picture of it, right? Right. Which is true, which is why we demo, right? But folks, quit building your demo during the demo, okay? There are so many tips and tricks in this class to do the demo better. I'm going to stop, get off my soapbox and go to the next page. All right, let's talk about trust because AI knows trust and it isn't pretty. Get your chat fingers out. What percentage of people trust salespeople? I use this stat a lot. If you've been to a sales shop, you know this answer. What's the number? Hint, it's under 50. 5%, 5, 3, 15. 23%, 23.72%, right, Chad? Ha ha, 25. Actually, folks, it's 3%. And AI is measuring this as we go along. And that's what that, that combination, right? That sentiment. Do I trust you or not? Now, what I've learned in research is this, Sylvain, you'll have to tell me if Q validates it, is that we all start at the bottom because we're sellers, okay? This trust scale is showing us that we don't start at distrust because that's like active, I know you and I don't trust you. Mistrust is you're a salesperson and I don't think highly of that. You're going to try to force me into something. I mistrust you. And our job through our engagement and through our authentic rapport building and listening, right? And questioning is to move up that scale as fast as possible. You will never get all the way to the top in a call or two. This is what you get over time. But what we're trying to hack here is moving up faster. So can you comment on that at all? Like do most sales cars start low in sentiment or do we come in positive and then it dips in the middle? 
there's a multitude of factor. Like you said, there's prejudice, there's biases, there's, you know, most of the time you should start at a neutral, but two things, trust is not something you can ask for. It's something that is earned. Ooh, right? Say that again. Come on. That's big. Trust is not something you can ask for. You need to earn trust and build trust. And it takes hours and weeks and years to build trust, but it takes seconds to lose it. All right. So things, uh, and, and I will tell you, you'll hear about empathy a lot as we move forward with um, emotional intelligence that like we're talking today, uh, empathy is the foundation of trust. And if one thing that, remember when I talked about meeting your customers where they are emotionally, mm -hmm. that is the first step of building trust because you're showing that you care, Lauren, that you're matching, like you said, it's you're connecting at an emotional level, not just at a rational level, which is super important in the world of six. I get that. Okay. And that, that makes sense because you're building empathy or, or connection. So the other part that we've learned is so important when building rapport, it's about finding common ground. Okay. It's about connecting because here's the truth. We've all heard it forever. People buy from people they like, but the truth is people like people who are like them. People trust people who are like them. There's about a bazillion studies out there that prove this, which is by the way, where bias comes from. Okay. We didn't all decide to be biased. It's hardwired in our brains to connect to people who we think are like us. So small talk was invented to help find common ground. We can do better than the weather people. Find real common ground, authentic rapport building. And here's a few ways that you can do that. If you have a call coming up with someone important like Sylvain, introduce yourself ahead of time. What if you even sent a video? What if you made sure that your LinkedIn didn't read like a resume, but like a human being, right? What if you were to share something personal about yourself? Well, we start out every sales shot with a campfire question because it helps us be humans. Has anybody been to those boring ass stiff webinars that are so like, nobody wants that. Be yourself, let your freak flag fly and let people connect to you. If you want to connect to them, you got to give to get is kind of what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's a really fun thing. I don't have time to cover it. It's called the Pratt Call Effect. And it's a literal study that says making fun of yourself after your credibility statement helps people bond to you faster. And this is where I tell you to go take the damn class. We now have all of these classes where I stole the tips out of available on demand singularly. You can take it by yourself. You can take it with your team. There is a six pack of all of these courses. Of course, it's a six pack, right? Or a case or a 12 pack. You can get them for seven. I'm sorry, it's 79 bucks a course or all of them for under 400. If you have a team and you'd like to take the classes, I'm going to give you my personal code to also get Q free for six months so we can measure the before and after. So find the classes at the salesbar.com. All of them are available there. If you want to take a look at Q and get a demo, again, friends of Factor 8, I will give you my personal code for your whole team if you email me at lb at factor8.com or just contact Sylvain's team and get a demo because it's really, really cool. It does all the things your conversational intelligence tool does and gives you this layer on top. I've loved it. I really have. It's been really fun. Thank you, Lauren. It's you know, like if you're tired of listening to conversation and you want to get to the point, what's been said, who cared, who did not, the key moments of the conversation, the action register, everything is done for you. Like we said, we surface the intelligence to make your life easier. And plus, will I, will improve your close ratio? No doubt. Oh my God, no doubt, right? Up to 89%. Keep the engagement, keep the sentiment high. If you want to contact us or find us, here's how you do it. Again, email me directly. If you've got a team you want to put through the training, and especially if you want to take advantage of the training plus Q for the before and after, or you can get a hold of Sylvain's team here, sales at unicorn.com. There's the phone number. Any last words? Thank you, Lauren. Good selling and great to have you, everybody here today. Appreciate it. Thanks.
Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next month on our next sales shot. Have a good one. Thank you, Lauren. Good to see you. Thank you.